What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Check it out. That's a black soldier fly. I don't ever see them hanging around. Usually they just fly off. And that's, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today, black soldier flies. So I made this bin in the springtime just out of a piece of plywood just to give it a shot because I've been doing some research on it. And let's see if you guys can see in here. It's my little can when they're old enough. Otherwise, they live in there. Let's see if we can't find some for you. Put some more pineapples and stuff in here this morning. Oh yeah, there they go. Can you see them? They're all over the place. Breaking it down. All right, so let's talk about it. Why would anybody want to raise some black soldier flies, some little maggots in a box like that in their yard? Because they're awesome. If you're already raising worms, then, I mean, it's not that different than raising worms. You might as well raise some black soldier flies too. Uh, you can feed them things that you couldn't put in your worm bin, like meats, uh, table scraps, dead animals. I've heard of people using you know, manure, dog poop, stuff like that, uh, and then it turns, turns it in to the little, the little bugs, a resource that you can turn around and feed your chickens, feed your fish, you can feed pigs, you could feed you know, reptiles if you have reptiles. Uh, it's, a, it's a good, high quality protein source, 45% protein. Um, even the little casings, when the adults emerge and fly away, the little casings left behind are high in calcium too, so you can even give the, the garbage from the black soldier fly that ate your garbage is still useful. So, they're awesome. So, all right, let's talk about life cycle. When the adult black soldier fly comes, she'll lay her eggs in uh, usually like a little piece of cardboard is what I put in there. That's what they really like, the little the little holes in the corrugated cardboard is a perfect little spot for them to lay their eggs. They'll lay their eggs in there right above the food pile. Not in the food pile like fruit flies do, but above the food, the food pile and then they'll hatch and they'll, they'll fall down into it. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's, that's how they do it. So it'll take about three to four days for those eggs to hatch and turn into the little larvae. They'll go down into your pile where, you know, depending on the temperature of course, it should take about two to three weeks for them to mature and when they get big they'll turn a darker color and they'll get bigger and they will naturally look for uh, a place to escape the compost pile so they'll look for like a slope and they'll crawl on out and that's where you catch them um, from there you would feed them to your chickens or your fish or whatever animal that you're raising them for um, and if you want to start a colony like this, then you need to take a handful of them and put them in a separate spot. That's what that little red coffee can was for that I have in there. Uh, it's about halfway full of dirt, or you know, you could use cocoa, peat moss, any, any kind of medium, doesn't matter. Give them something to when they're mature and they crawl out of the pile, they'll go into that dirt and then they'll do like a little, uh, you know, pupate cycle, or like a cocoon and they'll crawl out after about two weeks. It takes about two weeks in the can. And then once they're adults, they will emerge and they will live for five or six, up to eight days at the longest if conditions are awesome. They can live up to eight days. At that point, they don't have a mouth, so they don't, I guess they do have a mouth because I think they still drink water, but they don't eat. You know, they don't puke and spread disease like other flies. They don't poop, they don't bite, they don't sting. They're very clean. They're not a threat to humans. That was a, kind of a surprise over there on the leaf. Like, I don't ever see them hanging out. They're not usually around. They take off, I don't see them again. So that's what was so exciting to see those maggots in there because I've been raising these guys all summer and, you know, basically kind of gave up on them because I haven't seen any activity. I see them flying off all the time, but I don't see them coming back. So that's exciting. Now we're gonna have a colony, and now 
they kind of produce a smell that the adults recognize, the females will recognize, and it'll draw them back over to the box to lay their eggs there. So now that there is a colony in the box, that should only help, you know, keep a colony in the box. They should keep coming back and laying their eggs on the, on the cardboard in the box. So that's legit. Okay, life cycle. So uh, temperatures, the colony of larvae, likes to be in the mid 90s like 90 to 95 degrees is perfect uh, for pupating is better if you're in the low 80s when they're in the dirt can and they're going through their little cocoon process low 80s but I mean I have everything in the box all it's all the same temperature and it's working out just fine so um, critical temperatures for adults you know they're gonna die they can go up to 116 degrees before they'll start dying and they can go down to the 30s before they start dying, but the you know colony activity is gonna stop around 60 degrees. You know the activity is just gonna completely shut down, and they're gonna like hibernate and just be still. Uh, food they like to eat, like I said, table scraps. They can eat meat. They can eat animal carcasses. They can eat. You know, rotten produce, like high quantities of rotten produce because they really break it down real fast, way faster than worms. Uh, when you have a good sized colony in there, you have to really be consistent about feeding them or they'll be like fish out of water if, if they don't have any food. They don't like stuff that's high in cellulose, like branches, twigs, uh, you know, wood chips, probably straw wouldn't be good. Grass clippings is no good. They like stuff that's soft. They don't have teeth really <laughs> you'd kind of think that they do they don't have teeth so they kind of need it's better if it's soft they'll definitely get through if it's soft like a watermelon or banana or or you know melons something like that soft soft vegetables soft fruit and they'll get through it real quick uh, let's talk about the box I made the box out of a single piece of plywood and a couple of two by threes that I had laying around so there it is it's uh, a foot tall and a foot wide and four feet long. So I made it all out of one piece of plywood. Um, probably, you know, for $20, $25 cost about. And then I ordered 1,000 of the little black soldier fly larvae from Northwest Redworms. Northwest Redworms. Uh, he's got a website. I've bought from him two or three times. He's a he's a good company. I like that guy. He's got a lot of really useful uh, YouTube videos and stuff. He's got his own YouTube channel. A lot of good knowledge on there. Go check him out. Northwest Red Worms. And if you guys need any worms or black soldier fly larvae, that's where I got mine. They arrived in like two or three days. They were happy. They were wiggling. They were healthy. And obviously it's working. So that's awesome. Okay, and let's see, on the box, you wanna make sure you have a lot of small holes on the bottom so there's good drainage and it doesn't get anaerobic. You don't want it to smell bad. That'll bring other flies, unwanted flies, house flies and fruit flies and bleh, all kinds of nasty junk. Plus it'll smell terrible in your yard. So you want it to smell like a compost pile, like a sweet compost pile, I guess. So sweet stuff in there like corn like melons I know that really attracts them over there and and once it's established the smell of the colony will attract them back over there too um, like I said the you want to have some pieces of cardboard in there for them to lay their eggs on the females to lay their eggs on and uh, you know they only have like I said eight like eight days max to find a mate lay their eggs before they die that's their only concern um, the angle of the of the little crawl off slope is minus 35 degrees I read that it needs to be between 30 and 40 degrees and if it's more than 40 degrees they can have a hard time getting out so let's have another peek let's see if maybe we can wedge that in there so the angle let's see if I can see yeah the angle here 35 degrees and then I have these little things to oh snap there's another one right there what up and I have these doors that I pull off 
and I have a little a little can in there. That's where I catch them. Gotta watch out for spiders. Sometimes spiders will see try to build some webs in there and swipe them from you. No swiping. And ants also up the legs, man, because you're putting all kinds of goodies in here that have a lot of sugars and stuff left in them still. So the ants can be an issue. Um, I've heard of some people putting the legs of their bin in like a little cup of water. So the ants can't go through the water, can't swim. And that would probably help, but I didn't do that. <clears throat> Holy moly, it's hot out here. What else? Temperatures, don't let them get too hot. In the winter time, if you're gonna if you're gonna just let them do their thing, well then you know 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 their limits. Like I said, 30 degrees will, will kill them. 60 degrees they'll stop. Um, if you're trying to have them make it through the winter, just pull them up on the porch, put like a heat lamp on them, like you would for some little baby chicks, something like that. That'll keep them warm. Some are sheltered. If you can keep them, you know, in the 70s. Somewhere in the 70s, they'd probably do just fine. Mm. Trying to think of any other information I can give you guys that would be relevant to the black soldier flies. We talked about their lifespan. We talked about the box. We talked about the food. They can eat things like coffee grounds. It's not the best for them, but they'll, they'll digest it. They'll, you know make do if you if you like don't have any fruit or you can't find something awesome right away you can make do with like dog food like some moisten up some dog food or some cat food and put it in there or coffee grounds stuff like that they'll they'll deal with it until they get some fruit some something better some grain um yeah all right a couple other random things that i just thought of when i was walking back out of the house um, when they're adults and they mate, they mate in flight. I forgot to mention that. Uh, the meat, I said that they could eat meat. They can eat meat, but don't go crazy because, like I said, you don't want it to smell bad. Uh, they can't eat meat near as well as they eat other things like vegetable matter or processed food or whatever. But, you know, like you, I was bringing it up because your worms, you wouldn't be able to put that in your worm bin at all. So, Certain things like a carcass, they'd probably get through all the meat, they'll get through all the intestines and stuff, but things like if you put a chicken carcass in there, they're probably not gonna go through the feathers or their bones, or the, that stuff's gonna hang out for a while. Uh, other things like a broccoli stalk, you know, that's hard. They'll, they'll probably eat through all the little flowerets at the top, but that stalk is gonna sit in there for a while. The middle of the corn cob, stuff like that, that'll sit in there for a while. So just, just know that. Um, if it, you know, if it breaks down easier, it'll break down for them easier, or they'll be able to break it down easier also. Uh, moisture is important, especially out here in Arizona. This thing will dry out. And when it gets too dry, or when it even gets too hot outside, if there's not like a good moisture humidity in, in your pod, <clears throat> they will know that it's too dry and they won't crawl off because they know they're just going to dry up and die as soon as they leave. So they'll stay in there. Um, so then, you know, you won't see any activity in your cans when, it, when you're going to collect and feed your chickens in the morning there will be less stuff in there so if you can keep it cool in the 90s compared to 105 like it is right now and if you can keep it uh, a consistent moisture in there then they'll crawl off when they're ready if it's too wet then sometimes they can crawl you know right up the sidewalls because they can use that water like for suction and instead of just going up the ramp where you want them they'll just crawl out all over the place like crazy um, Citrus. I didn't say anything about citrus. I don't think a lot of people don't like to use citrus. Uh, I think you can use citrus. I would use citrus. We have so much citrus here. Why not? Like that's going to be that's going to be something that you would be able to use. You would probably even need to put in there because you're going to have so much of it. Like I have a giant grapefruit tree. I try to make you know grapefruit lemonade out of it as much as I can, but I can't eat all these grapefruits. It just it produces way more than I can handle. Uh, the argument was that the pH, you know, of citrus is too low, and I disagree. I think I think that it'll be fine. They get through it so fast, uh, especially if you mash it up. Sometimes 
I'll put a couple in there, you know, like I'll cut them in half or cut them in quarters, and the peels will hang out because the peels will dry up, and then that turns into something hard again, and then it's hard for them to get through. And, oh yeah, also, uh, if you guys don't want to build your own pod like this, if you don't want to mess with it, there's places, back there, there's places uh, that sell a thing called the Biopod. Actually, I think the guy at Northwest Redworms, he has it on his website, the Biopod, which is a plastic uh, pre-built -pre pod that has a little slope and everything and a little collection spot. So if you guys don't want to build your own, you can always buy one out of plastic. And the first time I ever saw black soldier flies was on a YouTube channel called Plant Abundance. You guys go check him out. He lives in California in the Bay Area. I think his name is Dan. He's got an awesome channel. Totally into the wood chips, totally into permaculture. He's got huge like Hugo culture mounds in his yard that are a couple years old now and he likes to do updates. And that was the first place uh, I saw black soldier flies was he was building a bin and he had mentioned that he had got it from Northwest Redworms. So Northwest Redworms having issues with that today. And uh, so I went and checked him out and his channel was awesome too. So check them both out. They're full of good information. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned, we'll have more for you.